Hey, 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 everybody. I'm coming to you just a couple minutes early, and without my own phone, I'm using Braden's phone. We are in Eugene. Me and Kristen, if you haven't heard, are back in town, safe and sound. We had a great trip. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, checking up on us. We've missed you all, but glad to be home. Uh, today, Adam and Davin are coming into town. They're going to be here for a few weeks, uh, but we are celebrating Adam's birthday in Eugene. And me rushing to get into Eugene, I totally forgot my phone. So uh, my devotional is going to be a little more makeshift than I want it to be because uh, I don't have all my notes or anything that I normally would have been traveling with. Uh, however, I still have the same thoughts in my mind, so I hope that you will tolerate the fact that I won't be reading directly from my Bible like I normally get to, uh, meant to be. We are just rushing around. However, tis the season. Thanksgiving is over, but I hope the reason for Thanksgiving is not. I hope that everybody is, is still very thankful for all the things that God has done for us, the, the, uh, just the many blessings in our life. Uh, too often we take them for granted. And I've just been thinking about contentment a lot lately. Uh, I've thought about the last few years of my life, not just few years, last um, number of years. Me and Kristen celebrating our 30th anniversary uh, made me go through my mind and think of how rough some of those years were. Uh, the struggle that it is sometimes to raise your uh, four kids, especially as a preacher, moving from place to place as we did for a while. And, and the, the burden of being married to somebody different. Some of you have heard me talk about uh, the difference between me and Kristen. Uh, Kristen was an only child and an only grandchild. Uh, I was one of six kids. My mom was one of 11. My dad was one of four. Uh, we had some, some trials in our marriage starting off, stuff that just the way she was raised was completely different from how I was raised. I was taught to share everything, and she never had to share with anybody, and th that poses problems on both sides. But the struggle that was there, that the times that uh, I mentioned in the sermon a few weeks ago, you know, how many of us have lived off of Top Ramen or Mac and Cheese or, or uh vegetables for that matter, you know, things that you could get cheap uh, just to make sure your family was fed. And the trials that we go through in life and the, the, the yearning that we want to have what other, other people have. And uh, one of the things that happened in our trip, the, the boat trip, we had one of the smallest rooms the ship had to offer. And, and when Kristen and I were making our plans, we were talking, boy, do we, we try and spend more money uh, to get a better room, and we're like, we're not spending our trip on, in the room anyway. We're spending it. We want to go do stuff. We want to see stuff. But as we were walking along the ship at different times, you could you could see people that were just entitled. They acted so entitled and full of themselves because they were on the top floor, or they just, I mean, they would cut in front of people and, and act like nobody else was even there. They would just, uh, the rudeness and uh, that attitude of smugness, and I just kept thinking, you know what? I'm blessed to be here. The, the stuff we got to see, I got to spend it with my bride of 30 years. And, and we were getting updates from the grandbabies. And, and I realized, you know what? I'm content. I, I love what I do with my life as a preacher. I know God has blessed me with that. He's blessed me with the church I'm at right now. The places I've gotten to go, uh, I, my two screensavers on my phone are my, uh, my grandbabies, uh, two pictures of, uh, one picture of, of, uh, the, the older ones, the other one, the younger ones. It's just, and I just smile every time I see Aspen and, and I'm blanking on names. Ain't that terrible? No, I'm, uh, Echo and Clay and Daisy. And I just smile. They make me happy. And that's contentment. And, and you think of the scripture says the peace that passes understanding. And I've got that. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you, I, I get it because happiness isn't about money. Happiness isn't about the biggest house on the block. It's not about the fanciest car. It's not about the trips. It is recognizing the beautiful things that God has actually put in your life and being thankful. When Paul talks about contentment is right up there with godliness. Be, or not with their God. It says contentment is godliness. 
He says, because when you came into this world, you had nothing. And it is assured that when you go out, you will have nothing then too. So what are we competing for? What are we longing for? I, I watched a movie yesterday that one of the, the comments they make in it is, there's no point in worrying about when you're going to die because you don't know when it's going to happen. Today might be my last day. And you all, if, you, if you're watching this, you know me. I truly, next to being a preacher, I know God made me a preacher. I know he wants me doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm very content with my calling. But the, the second best thing God made me is a grandpa. I love those grandbabies. He made me a father. I love my children. I was bragging on my children all over this trip. Not just my grandbabies. I'm so proud of the kids that, that me and Kristen have raised. They love God. They, they want their kids to, to grow up loving God. And, and we have a great family that still can sit down and, and enjoy a meal and play games and smile and laugh. And there was times when they were growing up where I didn't know if they were going to live that long because I was going to wring their neck. But see, when we can start appreciating the things that God has put in our life and stop thinking about all the things that we don't have. See, that's what gets in our way. Satan is, is, a, is a messenger of want. And what I mean by that is he goes around and he makes you want stuff you don't have. And he wants, makes you want it so bad that you're willing to do anything to get it. You will lie, you will cheat, you will steal. Some people will kill, they will do whatever they can to have what they want. Instead of just being content with what they have. There's, there's beauty in scripture because God assures his people that we will never want for anything that we need. Not anything we want, anything we need. He will make sure that we have everything that we need. So if we can be content with that, if we can realize that sometimes the, the tough times are just making us stronger, they're helping us learn appreciation and thanksgiving. We are in a season where the, uh, me and Braden driving through the mall parking lot, and I said, oh, no. I just realized we're after Thanksgiving. This place is always going to be packed now. I was thankful to get a parking spot, and I was thankful that it wasn't raining so I could do this talk, and I'm thankful that Braden remembered his phone because I was the dummy and forgot mine. But when you read Paul especially, Paul talking about his imprisonments and his beatings and, and, and all of the trials of his ministry. And he goes, and I've learned to be content in, in everything, even adversity, opposition, persecutions. Paul was able to be content. So I want to encourage everybody this week, this year, the rest of the time before Jesus shows up, the things we have in our life that we, if we try and compare it to somebody else, I told somebody, uh, I've told a lot of people this before, but I got some funny looks at camp when I said it at camp a few years back. I said, asked all the kids, I said, if you could know, uh, meet anybody in the world, if there's anybody you think, you know, they're your, your favorite celebrity, that one person you just, you really want to meet, who would it be? And they did. They picked sports stars or movie stars or, or internet celebrities or whatever. And I said, you know, the thing is, you should want to meet me. And everybody chuckled. And I said, no, no, I'm serious. It's not an ego thing. It's because a celebrity can't offer you what I can offer you. And that is the message of Jesus Christ. The only thing I want to see is us go, go to heaven together. I'm content. Sure, there's things every once in a while Satan will sneak it in there. Make me want something I don't have. But the reality is, Satan doesn't make me feel like my life is less because I don't have it. God is so good to me. God has blessed me so richly. Paul, in all of his trials, still went and he said, I'm not boasting, but I'm just telling you, I've learned to be content. So here's our challenge. Can we be content? Can we look at our life and instead of looking at all the things we don't have, can we take the time to tell God, thank you for all the things that we do have? And if we can learn to do that, here's the thing. Everything else is just sugar. It's just extra sweetener in a perfect life. It's, it's just 
the, those extra things. I tell my family, Christmas is coming. I have no idea what I would want for Christmas because truly, I have it all. I have everything that it should take to make a man of God happy. I'm content. But anything they give me, I will love it. It'll be a blessing because it's sugar. It's just extra that God has put in my life to make me smile, to make me happy. So here's my challenge to you. I know I've said the word challenge, I think, three times, but I want to challenge it. I want you to challenge yourself over this holiday season, all the way into the new year, and like I said, up to the day Jesus comes. I want you to learn to look at the things in your life and be thankful and content. Look at what we have instead of what we don't have. Look at the obstacles that we have and just say, but God, I know you've already promised you're going to get me through all of this, so I'm content. If this is the trial I have to carry today, then it's the trial I will carry. If this is the struggle I have to have, then I'll, in, I'll accept that struggle with happiness or at least with joyfulness. We'll say joyfulness because I know God has already assured me he'll get me through anything. So, Happy holidays. I'm sorry I missed you on Thanksgiving, but I did actually sneak a peek on the camera a couple times to see everybody fellowship, and we were happy to see. Nice crowd there. But I was thankful for you guys, even though I wasn't with you this Thanksgiving. I'm thankful as we go into the Christmas holiday. I'm thankful as we're starting a new year together if the Lord doesn't come first. And I'm very content to be the family that we are. And everything else is just going to be sugar. Love you guys. We're going to pray. I, I haven't seen, I know I got on a little early, like I said, because of the circumstances, but uh, I still want to encourage you to keep praying. But thank God. Go down the list. Make a, a count your blessings list this holiday season and just remind yourself how great God has been to all of us. Let's pray. Dear God and Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. We thank you for our families. We thank you especially for our church family, our brothers and sisters that that are united through Jesus Christ, the ones that we look forward to spending eternity with, the ones that we are growing closer with, the ones that I hope we desire to be around as much as possible. Father, we thank you for the blessings in our life. We thank you for all the good things you've done for us. Father, help us to be content. Help us to be joyful in, in all of the blessings. Pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great holiday season, everybody. And look forward to seeing you all Sunday. Take care.